So we're going to go from the 1800s to the 1900s. And um, we're going to look at Angel Neal. And Angel um, was um, born in Belgium, in Brussels. Um, and she started, um, her story starts there and uh, continues to the shores of the Isle of Man in 1947. Um, and we're going to, the first bit of music we're going to play um, is about um, her early life. Um, and in May 1940, her family, uh, family arts, um, had to um, flee Brussels uh, because the German forces uh, came to occupy it. Um, and they fled to France and lived as refugees there. Um, but that was uh, short-lived, um, as soon France was under occupation as well. So they returned um, back to Brussels. And uh, when they returned, um, they joined the anti-Nazi resistance efforts. Um, and Angel um, persuaded her parents to, to join the Comet Line. And the Comet Line was a network of people across occupied Europe um, that provided uh, escape routes for Allied forces. Um, and Angel played an active role in this. Um, and she was a teenager, still completing her education as well. And so the first piece um, of music um, that we're going to play for Angel is the Comet Line. And um, I hope it, uh, it captures the way um, a, a childhood can be interrupted and um, uh, how war uh, can, what happens uh, when that happens. And um, also um, in the face of that, um, uh, the courage of, of Angel and her family as well. So um, I'm joined by Anna and Mir again for this. And this is the comment line.
sorry, it's thirsty work, this. <laughs> um, so Angel moved to the Isle of Man in 1947. Um, and that was to marry uh, the Manx tank driver that she met at the end of World War II um, when Brussels was liber liberated. Uh, and that Manx tank driver was Philip Neal. And I'm delighted to have uh, some of their family in tonight. It's really special that they've come along. Um, so when Angel moved to the Isle of Man, um, she became involved in a number of campaigns. And uh, in 1957, um, she came to, to aid um, a crew of stranded and injured Breton uh, so, um, sailors. And that set her on the path uh, to become the honorary French consulate agent. Um, and in her time, in her 21 years, um, she helped with over 1,800 incidents. Um, but her role as French consulate agent um, was less uh, than favorably viewed by some members of the, the Manx public. Um, but it was her second campaign, the anti-Birching campaign, um, that brought her into uh, the most com conflict with Manx public opinion. And at that time, um, in the 1970s, um, the popular opinion on the Isle of Man was that Birchin um, was a good thing, that um, you, you can see some newspaper clippings and um, it was something that was viewed to, to deter um, crime, but also um, they, they thought that it helped the tourism industry which is just, yeah, it's a, it's a bit mad looking back on it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so in 1969, after the bitching of a 15-year-old um, boy, uh, Angel, and Millicent Farragher and Valerie Roach, alongside the Manx Penal Reform Group, um, petitioned uh, the Manx government to... Um, conduct an inquiry into birching on the Isle of Man or the use of corporal punishment. Um, and in I went to see the Millicent Farragher scrapbooks in the Manx Museum and I was really shocked uh, to see the way that these women were talked about in the, the newspapers. Um, and the fact that Angel wasn't from the Isle of Man um, was used against her. Um, and uh, it was... In uh, when we uh, when I went there, um, yeah, I just found that really shocking and quite upsetting. So this next piece um, is called "Against the Tide," and it's about uh, going against um, uh, the, the popular Manx uh, opinion uh, at that time. Um, and Angel, in order to kind of battle um, that tide, um, she looked at the police commissioner reports um, and produced statistics. Uh, and she published that in her own book, uh, Against Birchin. And that book was actually used um, as evidence uh, when the European uh, uh, courts, human rights courts, sorry, um, found that Birching violated the Con Convention of Human Rights. Um, so this is Against the Tide, and um, I'm joined by Katie and Kirsty again. Bye. 
very much. That was against the tide. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy that Angel and Millicent Farragher and Valerie Roach decided to do that um, because they, they did help to end um, corporal punishment on the Isle of Man. Um, we're, we're coming to the end um, of Angel's section. Um, and when Angel was a French consular agent, um, the name Madame Angel was passed around um, the French and Breton trawlers that were sailing in the Irish Sea at the time. Um, and that made me think about um, her legacy, um, uh, what she did um, as French consular agent, uh, anti birch campaigner, and anti Nazi resistance worker. Um, and um, it also made me think um, about what was beyond that as well. Um, so this last piece uh, is titled Madame Angel. Um, and in her last 15 years of her life, she continued to um, campaign for refugee rights uh, against the use of cruise missiles. And she even did some research for the Celtic League as well. Um, but she also loved music and she loved to play the piano. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave you with Anna uh, for this last one. Uh, so this is called Madame Angel. <laughs> 